Kemper and welcome to another edition of Up Close and Personal. Today we had the esteemed and wonderful majors Holly and Carl Ruthberg. Hi guys. Hello Sabrina. Hello gang. Thank you so much for doing this for us. You all have such a rich history with Creative Arts Ministry and you're such champions for what the arts can do as far as kingdom progress. So I'm excited that we have you guys. To start off, can you tell us a little about yourself, where you guys are from and how your artistic journey of music and art sort of began? Well, I'm from upstate New York and to those in Florida, that means it's not New York City with the tall skyscrapers, right. that would be Carl. Um, it is rural, small town, and uh, grew up in a Christian home, which I am thankful for. And uh, I would say my, my roots in the arts and music and wonderful things in worship come from church um, from the very beginning. My grandfather was a, one of those Baptist ministers with the ties and the tails and the hats in the summer, and he just made it seem wonderful. And there was great music big pipe organ, nice choir, somebody playing the violin, you know, and I just, it all seemed to fit together as um, a wonderful thing. And me, uh, quite the opposite. Uh, I was born in the Bronx in New York City uh, from a family of five and a very dysfunctional family, capital D. So when people talk about dysfunction, I raise my hand, I'm going, yay, I've been there, hello. And was determined not to raise a dysfunctional family. Hello, thanks very much. The Corps, the Port Richmond Staten Island Corps, uh, became my second family. It was a Scandinavian Corps, very cultural back then, very beautiful culture to share in. And anyway, I can go on and on with that. And wonderful home big ladies and just very supportive people. And um, New York City is a fantastic place for theater. And really, it caught me early in my life uh, with. Um, Mr. Brown, a theater teacher in elementary school and then in uh, middle school. And uh, I was in various um, uh, sketches and skits uh, through the years and uh, the outreach to school. The New York theater uh, minister, uh, not ministry, the industry would come into the school system and perform a segment of a play, which was very interesting. And that caught many of us, uh, you know, g gave us that fever for performing arts. It was really kind of exciting. Yeah, that sounds like a great opportunity. And it sounds like you got it from your community and then your yep. wife was really blessed to have it in her family, which is something really special. So for either of you or both of you, would you say that there's one person who stood out as like the greatest influence in your life as it relates to your artistic journey? Wow. I'll go first on that one. For me, it was uh, the college I went to. I was blessed to be able to go to Houghton College. Uh, I had a scholarship. Otherwise, I wouldn't have made it, uh, just financially. But sometimes uh, God puts your dreams together. And I had a wonderful, wonderful piano teacher there who was not just a piano teacher, but a, a mentor and a guide, a uh, fine, wonderful Christian man who was the kind of influence I needed. I, I came needing everything he had to give because he was a teacher, a mm. fine performer, but he was a teacher. And he instilled excellence and uh, discipline, the fact that you have to work. Uh, some, some of the people at my college uh, in the piano major department, you know, just came with the piano running out their fingers already. For me, I had to put in my time and work. And uh, he, he taught me how to do that and to keep my center in God. And, and to know that that gift came from God, but that it was my job to, to work at it. So Dr. Heisinger, God bless you. <laughs> For me, it was uh, many people. I, I could think starting with Mr. Brown, uh, the theater teacher in, in uh, elementary school and in middle school, and then in the Salvation Army, you know, using, you know, back then uh, we used to have what was called Young People's Leaders Meetings on Sunday nights. and. Our, my spiritual mother, our, my core officer, Major Roberta Stickley, involved the young people. And that included, you know, reading scripture, leading songs, but also doing uh, skits and sketches. And, 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 and also when reading scripture, not just throwing it at you, but saying, read the scripture, look at it, study it, you know. And then that whole idea of involvement. So Major Roberta did that. Then later on, it would be 
of Pat McGill, one of the, a new lieutenant. At, in fact, he was at Times Square when I was uh, a, a teenager, and uh, we used to do street meetings. And then, and he was also big on performing, uh, doing a, a play at youth councils. So I was always involved in that. So we see it's many people through uh, through my lifetime. Colonel, what's his name? Agnew. Um, he, had, he, was, he, had, he was very funny. But anyway, he, because he had mannerisms, you know, it kind of, he sounded like Snacklepuss sometimes, exit stage fright, you know, that sort of thing. But he was, uh, he would perform uh, plays for Holy Week and, and, and on Good Friday or the, uh, the Friday evening at the temple around Holy Week time. So I was always involved in various uh, 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 shows and performances for the army mostly and then sometimes at school. So through that and through the mentors that you guys have you both have kind of touched on it but how would you say that you encountered your faith through Jesus Christ through those mentors and all the influences uh, that the arts played music and the arts played in your life? I think uh, your questions have made me realize how important the choice of college was for me. Um, and I'll say, say a word up to Houghton College and to Asbury and what other um, Christian colleges are out there that have fine academic and artistic um, base as well. Um, I just am blessed that that's where I went. Uh, for me, my musical knowledge, my, my goal was to be able to, to play the piano and have my my artistic skills developed so that they could be used in church, you know, in worship. And when, when I play the piano for worship and people sing, I, I think to myself, this is, this is what it was about. This is why I went. And I'm grateful for that hand in hand feeling of your arts and your faith being hooked up together. Um, for me, you know, that the right college was the right thing. And I, I think of somebody who's just made a decision to change colleges um, it's got to be the right teacher. It's got to be the right atmosphere. It's got to be the right um, influence all the way around. And even with the people that you're there, your fellow students, um, it all fits together. And for me, uh, you could tell that we're opposites. You know what I mean? It's, it's like uh, anybody who knows us knows that, you know, she, she's just so holy and wonderful. And me, you know, it's like, here's this ragamuffin coming off the street. Hello, work with me, you know? And uh, so it's learning. For me, it was learning uh, the disciplines and looking at people. And also, like, uh, following the leading of the Holy Spirit is so important. Yeah. And I don't mean a willy-nilly way of approaching life, but just following the Spirit. And then that led me to the dream that I had for a theater ministry in Times Square. Yeah. And I wrote a proposal like 25 years ago, and it didn't happen until like 14 years later wow. when it was um, Commissioner Joe Nolan, Colonel Bill Lamar, and it was like this alignment that just happened because they had this property right in Times Square, also known as Hell's Kitchen to the West. Mm -hmm. And the dream came true and the Holy Spirit guided and then we were chosen. And it was so exciting because we each bring something so unique to this, not only with our personalities, but the inclusiveness of people because you're dealing with people of many times with alternate lifestyles, and we have to be sensitive to that as, as Christians, their creativity, what to um, what is allowed to happen, so to speak, language. You know, many times we need the shock words, and you have to be very sensitive to that. I have a funny story, but I won't go into that now Aww. with Holly and with one of our productions. But what well, you have to deal with, you know, people just sometimes ad living. And I remember turning to a director and saying, is that in the script? And he said, no, you know. So it's just, it's, so it's a matter of learning all these things. And it's the discipline. And that took years, really. I mean, it, the Lord gave us time to kind of figure this out as core officers. And then when we were chosen for Times Square, which was a very unique ministry, and it was an exciting one and a changing one. And that's really God's guidance in our lives, individually and together. Absolutely. Did I answer the question? You did. And I'm going to go off script here, and I'm going to ask you guys another question. What was the driving force behind that proposal because you believed in it so much you kept going at it for 14 years 
Sorry, can go I ahead, just say one ahead. thing that I think a theater ministry wouldn't work everywhere. Right. You know, you have to think what's this community? What's the Salvation Army's responsibility there? Um, you know, sometimes a sports ministry in the inner city someplace is going to be fine. But if you're, if the Salvation Army is going to be a block off Broadway in the middle of Times Square, uh, you should be, you know, relating to that community. Yeah. And we don't always think that way. We aren't careful. We're wanting to put the same format in every place. And that's a mistake, you know, it's being led by the spirit, being sensitive to, to community that you are in. And the, I would just say in here, and then Carl, don't forget what you were going to say, that one of the things that has struck me lately, especially right now during Corona, et cetera, et cetera, is that sometimes you're on hold. You know, right now we are meeting virtually for your conservatory, whereas last summer I spent a week with a conservatory with 120 people and you, and we're and we are in it, we are performing, we are learning, we are rehearsing, and it's amazing. Right now we can't do that. Yeah. And we put it on hold, and what do we do during that time? We work, we train, we stay focused. Yeah. You know, in the 14 years, while that between the proposal and the actual thing, and it's not that his proposal made it happen, but yeah. it was part of it. There's 14 years of, of following the Lord's leading and leading worship and having sketches and choir practices and and songsters and band, all of that goes together. And sometimes it's hard to wait. That's what I'm trying to say. But we need to figure out what should we be doing while we're waiting. When I started that proposal, I was checking to see what other churches had ministries in Times Square. And it was the Episcopals. It was the, what was that church? Um, church the, the Church Lambs. of the Nazarene, the Lambs, had a vibrant ministry. In fact, they even had a, a legitimate Broadway show in their space. They did Godspell, and I want to say for years, yes. So I remember checking with them, and it was another church, another local church, trying to find out what made this happen and how the Army can do this. A key to this thing, Sabrina and gang, is that there was leadership who was confident in themselves to allow us and give us the latitude to do things. Sometimes we within our organizational structure are afraid to let people do their things, but it was nice, let me tell you, for a while there, to be trusted and, and you know, not, not exclude anybody, but to bring them into it so that when this thing happened in 98, I want to say, um, the, the DC Colonel Bill Lamar said, we have this, uh, th this whole idea for the property because what had happened was the old building had been torn out uh, and uh, the, uh, they had moved over, uh, what's, what's that company? Um, Rockefeller Center had moved over from 6th Avenue to 7th Avenue, took the old building, and then they had, they bought the property that we built the theater in, and it was, it was dormant for 10 years, completely empty, vacant lot in the middle of New York City. So the TC, as he's going by, see, all these things were like happening. What can we do with that property? And TC had an idea, and Colonel Bill Lamar, and then Bill calls me, and I said to him, do you know I wrote a proposal 12 years ago? You know, it was 14, 12 at that time. And he said, no, and I sent it to him. Anyway, one thing led to another, and that's how we got chosen um, to be, well, he said, you're being, you're being considered, even before he knew of my proposal. So tell me that's not the Holy Spirit working, yeah. you know? And that's really uh, the exciting part of just putting it all in God's hands. And throughout your lives or throughout that process, did you guys have a scripture verse that was like an anchor for you? We used, a, what, First Peter 3.15? No, that, that's when we opened it, but individual, you do your individual. Go ahead. <laughs> this is not exactly the answer to your question, but, oh. but uh, for me, that little thought of all my life, I would, I would refer to Psalm 23, you know, just knowing that God is leading you. It's our business to follow. And as we developed that ministry that Carl was talking about, which is a piece of our story, um, the address was 315, 315 West 47th Street. The theater became known as Theater 315, which it still is. Yep. And someone helped us find 1 Peter 315, which says this, are you ready? In your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you 
excuse me, to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, that, that one hit us like a ton of bricks. Yep, that's what it is. Don't, don't misunderstand me. Don't beat people up with your, with your opinions and your faith. Uh, do it with gentleness and respect. Always be ready to give a reason for the hope that you have, which means your life needs to radiate hope and, and your faith in the Lord. And if somebody asks, you be ready and do it with gentleness and respect. So that's not quite an answer, but it's a um, verse that certainly applies to us both and to that particular kind of ministry and to people in the arts in general. We deal with a lot of different people in the arts, whether you're in college or putting on a production or um, performing whatever you're doing, and we need to be ready with gentleness and respect. Amen. It's having that knowledge and that, that confidence and what Paul wrote in a, my life first, you know, that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Mm -hmm. And when you're working on the front lines, whether it be theater, um, uh, whether it be, you know, in the world, as far as uh, commercial music, you need to know who you are as a Christian and live your life and enjoy your life and let it show on your face. Sometimes as Christians, you know, we don't put the smile on it. It's got to be real. You know, it's got to be real. And that, to me, was what our ministry was all about. It was real, that people saw something different in our lives just by the way we carried ourselves and the way we reacted to them and we, how we brought them in uh, to our fellowship, whether it be in ministry or in the community. We've talked a lot about, about that Times Square ministry. But That's one true. of the things that he just said there, uh, not just your own life making a difference, but your performance, your art makes a difference. And in that case, in the middle of, of a mess area, um, the difference in the performances, in the art, in the space, in the way we took care of it, between that and, and the rest of the world yeah. was dramatic. And people appreciated it, they saw it. I think we, we have to have excellence. You know, we, we cannot say, well, we're Christian, so whatever, God will bless it. No, it's like if we are Christian artists or Christian whatever, sports people, we have to be the very best we can be. Amen. And, and that gives honor to Christ as opposed to, because I'm a Christian, whatever I do, you know, God will bless it. And, you know, I don't, I don't have to practice. I'll just get out there and ask God to bless it. Wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Wrong. You are And, and really throughout our... That's it. <laughs> really, throughout our ministry, you know, even before Times Square, I mean, Times Square was, was my dream, and then it became our dream. But in every core situation, we always, um, we really encourage people to give their best, to do their best, and to prepare our people. You know, you don't just throw scripture at people. You give them time to read it. There's nothing worse and nothing more distracting than a person reading scripture cold and mispronouncing a name or mispronouncing words. That's not fair to the word of God, not fair to the person. Yeah. And, and not fair, of course, in the preparation that the Holy Spirit is giving. You know, and it is not you walk around uptight, but just do it and do it right. You know, that's how I look at it. I mean, uh, be proud of who you are as a Christian and to live it. And that's what we've learned, really, through our core experiences and through our, um, uh, th through our beautiful ministry at, at Seven Years at Times Square. Would you guys share some best practices for how you believe you can develop into a better artist for the glory of God? I think uh, your wife just hit on it when she talked about pursuing excellence, but is there anything else you'd like to like, expand upon as far as that goes? I would just like to say that in my own journey on this, be prepared to change, be prepared to grow, mm -hmm. be prepared That's to learn new things. Um, out of the box. Yeah, out of the box, Carl just said, it's um, the costuming thing that I've gotten into. I always messed around with costumes, but in my last few years, that became important in the Eastern Territories, um, TAM department. And it's like, all right, let's learn how to do this. Let's, let's get better at it. I think. Um, whether it's a new art or whether it's a development of the art that is yours, not to stagnate, you know, to allow the Holy Spirit to, to prompt you and to push you along into 
into new things, better things, and um, not be afraid to step out with courage. Be convinced, you know, be convinced of what you're doing. I have five things. One, rehearsal. Really know your material. Take time with it. That is very, very important. If you're leading a song, find out the name of the tune. Don't say, oh, when you stand up there in the, in the middle of the morning meeting and all of a sudden, I don't know the tune. Give me a break. You know what I mean? Hello. The other one is learn how to take directions. If you have a director, listen to what he or she is saying. You know, we have seen some fantastic people uh, direct and uh, the sensitivity and the uh, the joy of just watching all this happen and, and uh, that creativity and I'm thinking what was that thing with Anna did uh, that was um Jesus that Jesus Christ Superstar no that, that was Godspell the director oh it was fantastic we got to hurry up here uh, take nothing for granted uh, think of different scenarios sometimes when you're doing things again listen to your director and most of all be prepared for the Holy Spirit to guide yes you guys are amazing. Thanks so much for sharing everything with uh, the St. Pete Corps and myself. You've been a blessing to our division major with your costuming for our youth councils and telling me about TAM and allowing me to have that experience. I have will never forget. And every time I talk to the kids in Florida about it, they're like, we want to go, we want to go. So thank you for everything you've done here and everything you've done up there as well. Amen. God bless you, Sabrina, and God bless everyone.